guys, I'm Marilene and welcome back to my channel. So I'm back after my mini hiatus and I hope everyone had a wonderful holiday season and that 2020 brings only blessings. So for my first video back, I'm actually doing something that would usually be a bonus video. I'm going to go through the books I read this holiday season and tell you what I thought about them, kind of giving a review, but maybe a bit more personal. So the first book I read is Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. Now I was super excited to read this book because I love Lee Bardugo's work and this is her first adult fantasy and it's set at Yale University and it is about the elusive uh, societies in Yale University like Skull and Bones, Scroll and Key, those kind of things. You can find amazing conspiracy theories about them online and this one kind of plays into the conspiracy theories you can find about those societies. So Alex, who has the ability to see ghosts, is chosen for the ninth house which is Leith and they have to ensure that the other eight societies in the book do not abuse their magic. So what eventually happens is that a girl is murdered uh, off campus and it is Alex's job, well it's not actually her job, they don't want her doing it, but she tries to figure out who killed this girl and eventually finds out that the that she had a lot of links to the different Yale societies. So this book I would give four and a half stars to. I really love this book. I loved the characters. They are so well developed, three-dimensional characters that are really interesting, not necessarily the type of characters that you'd think you'd see in a book like this. I really, really enjoyed it. I enjoyed Alex's past coming out. I enjoyed some of the subplots that are woven in. I enjoyed the flipping between timelines. And obviously it's a really well written book. It's a Lee Bardugo book. It's gonna be well written. So yeah, the only reason I am deducting half a star is because, and this is a little bit of a spoiler, the ending doesn't have as much to do with the societies as I had hoped. So that's kind of what brings you to the book, but it's more of a fantasy about um, ghosts and ghost possession than it ends up being about the societies themselves. Next up is The Fork, The Witch and The Worm by Christopher Paolini. Now this is for the Aragon fans. This is a set of short stories that occurs after the events of Aragon and well after the events of Inheritance and it follows Aragon as he tries to find a safe haven for the dragons and then also a few short stories about some of the beloved characters from the Inheritance cycle. This book I would give two and a half to three stars, I'm still not sure, because yes, the writing is good, yes, the short stories are interesting, but I expected a lot more from this book, perhaps that's just my own error, because it had very little to do with Aragorn himself, who is the main character of the Inheritance Cycle and who you really want to see more of it didn't really contribute anything further to the story so definitely don't read it if you want it as kind of sequel vibe it's short stories set in that world and it's perfectly entertaining but you could have skipped it and not have missed out on a lot so yeah the third book that i read is a reaper at the gates by saba tahir so this is the third book in the ember cycle ember quartet um by tahir and i really really liked this book i'm giving it four stars the characters as always they were amazing uh, a lot of morally grey characters, a lot of complicated character arcs and characters having to leave behind their pasts and become new people, having to accept things that happen in their pasts. And it was just an amazing book that revealed so many great plot twists and mysteries that have been building up through the series that finally kind of 
came to a resolution but it wasn't necessarily the resolution that you wanted and the ending of this book is so striking and emotional it was just amazing to read the only reason that I am giving it four stars and not five is that I think the plotting of this book was a little bit all over the place. I don't feel like it really followed a coherent structure of plotting. It was a lot of things that were just kind of happening one after the other after the other. A lot happens in this book, so I feel like it was a little thrown together. But just as a reader and not as a writer, I absolutely loved this book and would recommend this quartet to everyone so I'm super excited for the fourth book to come out because it ended on a big cliffhanger. I apologize if I look very sweaty during any during this video because it is really hot here and as you can see I got a little sunburn so it's crazy and I had to close the windows put off the fans in order to do the videos justice so yeah that's why I may be glistening very much. So anyway, the final book that I read this holiday season, and I actually started this one in January, and that is A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. Now, it is no secret that I love this writer. So I read her uh, The Dark Vault series, and I absolutely loved it, which is why I decided to read another one of her series. This one I'm giving three and a half stars. So I'm first going to tell you what I loved about this book. The characters are really great characters. The idea is amazing. The world building is great. And it's just a cool story to read. And now if I have to critique it as a writer, which is why I'm giving it three and a half stars, there are a few things in this book that could have been better. Um, the characters are described by looking at themselves in a mirror, which if you're a writer is kind of a bit of a no-go. So I was actually surprised to see a writer who this is a best-selling series and this is a writer with experience, but she describes her characters by having them look at themselves in a mirror. And then also some of the plot twists or resolutions were very predictable and I think I already know what one of the big mysteries in the series is going to end up to be. So yeah, it wasn't the best book ever. There were a few writing things that I thought, hmm, I wouldn't have done that. It felt like more of an introduction to the world than an actual story and some of the things were just really predictable. That being said, as a reader, I loved this book. I read it so quickly, really liked it, and as soon as I finished, I ordered the other two books. So if you're not going to look at it from a really literary point of view, and I'm not trying to put down the author, I love V. Schwab's work, and I think she's an amazing writer. There were just a few things in this book that I didn't necessarily agree with from a writing perspective, but from a reader perspective, this is a really great book, great characters, great world, and I am very much looking forward to the rest of the series and to Schwab's other books. Those are the books that I read this holiday season. Before I, want, I end this video, I want to show you some books that my grandmother gave me on the day that we returned home and um, I'm really excited about them. So the first one is Tales Grotesque by Edgar Allan Poe. Um, and why I am so excited about this is that you can obviously tell it's a pretty old book. I don't have anything by Poe, so I'm pretty excited to read this one because it's shorter tales, so it'll be easier to read. And why this is so exciting to me is that my great-grandfather worked at the library so these were his books so he actually signed it with his name and his address and then august let me just try to put that in focus august 1931 so this is a first edition no it's not a first edition um but this book was published in 1931 and he got it in 1931 um, well, this particular edition was published in 1931. So just having that, I never met my great-grandfather, but having that of him is amazing. And then the other one, uh, which is also one of his, and it's kind of falling apart, is The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexandre Dumas. Um, and it is also signed by my great-grandfather. You can see it's, it's very much falling apart, but also signed by my great-grandfather, August 19th. 
31. I was ecstatic when I got these books because they have so much history in them and they are just classics. So yeah, I'm so excited to put them on my bookcase and to read them. Actually, I don't know how I'm going to read this one because I'm going to have to treat it very, very gently, but I am very excited about that. So yeah, those are my book related things that I did this holiday season and then pretty soon I'm going to be putting up a writing vlog that will show you what I did for writing this holiday. Well, it'll tell you that one, show you that and then show you that I am very close to finishing my manuscript. So I will see you guys in the next video. Be sure to check out my social media link and my website. They're all listed down below. If you want more videos like this, please give it a thumbs up so I know that you like this type of content. And if you want writing advice videos every single Friday and tons of bonus content like this, then you have to hit that little subscribe button and ring that bell. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.